How many of you guys were told about a program called Voice Meter and you look up a tutorial and the first thing you see is this thing? And you're like, what the hell does any of this mean, man? Who am I, a scientist? I get it, it looks complicated and scary, but trust me, once you get the hang of it, it's actually really intuitive to use and probably the best free audio software that you're ever gonna come across for streaming. If you've never heard about Voice Meter before, it's basically like a free digital mixer that you can use to separate audio like your game audio, Discord, or Spotify. So let's say for example, you're playing a game and you're listening to music in your headphones, but you don't want your stream to hear that music because I don't know, maybe you're listening to Michelle Branch or something and you're really embarrassed about it. You can mute the music just for your stream, but still have the game audio go out to all your viewers. You can also use voice meter to process your mic's audio so it sounds really good for your stream. However, I don't recommend that because I, frankly, I think there are better solutions for processing your audio, which I've already done in another video. So we won't be covering any of the audio processing in this video, but we will break down voice meter so that it's very easy to understand and show you how you can use it to have complete control of your audio for your stream. What's up guys, it's Nutty. So let's put aside actually installing voice meter because it's really important that you have a really clear picture about what voice meter actually does so that you understand how to actually use it for controlling your stream's audio. Let's start with how most people's audio is set up. You basically have OBS sending a single audio track to Twitch, which is eventually what your viewers hear. Your typical OBS setup will have two main audio sources. Your microphone is pretty self-explanatory. It's basically the thing that you make noises with your mouth into. And then you have this thing called desktop audio. And the way you can think of this is basically if you hear this in your headphones or your speakers, this is exactly what's gonna be captured by desktop audio. In most cases, this is gonna be the audio from all your programs, so from all the games that you're playing, Discord, Spotify, or anything you listen to music out of. All of those programs get combined down into a single audio source, which as you can tell is a problem because you as the streamer wanna control what your viewers hear and what you hear individually. So we're gonna scrap this whole setup and replace it with something else. Imagine a big box. And this box has a bunch of inputs and a bunch of outputs. You can think of your inputs as things that you can plug into this box. And those could be physical things like a microphone, or they can be programs on your computer like Spotify or Discord. Those physical things are what's known as hardware input devices, and those programs are what's known as virtual input devices. And this box happens to have three hardware inputs and two virtual inputs. Now the outputs on this box are things that hear audio. So again, these could be physical things like speakers or headphones that sound actually comes out of, or these could be programs that listen to audio such as OBS. Now this box has a bunch of buttons on them which can control which inputs go to which outputs. For example, I can plug in my game audio into one of these virtual inputs, then use this box and tell it to output the audio to my headphones and to OBS. But if I'm listening to music, I can plug in Spotify into another virtual input and then tell the box to only output that audio to my headphones and not output to OBS. So basically the box that allows us to do all this stuff this is what voice meter is. All it is is software that you can plug audio devices into and then route it to other devices that will receive that audio. So does that give you guys a clearer picture of what voice meter does? Just say yes, Gavin, okay? Because I never want to do diagrams like that ever again in my entire life. So let's actually get into installing voice meter. So I've left a link in the description box down below for where you can actually find the install. You'll notice that there's three different variants of voice meter. There's voice meter regular, voice meter banana, and voice meter potato. And they're basically all the same. The main difference is that they just have a different number of inputs and outputs. We're gonna go with voice meter banana because voice meter potato has the most inputs and outputs, but it also costs money. You're also gonna wanna install VB cable virtual audio device. I haven't told you what this is for yet, but this is gonna make sense in a little bit. By the way, I should have mentioned at the start of this video that this video is for Windows only. So if you're using a Mac, 
You just got pranked, son. After you've installed everything, it's gonna make you restart your computer. So when it restarts, just open up Voice Meter Banana. This is what it's gonna look like when you open it for the first time. Now, like I said, I know it looks scary and complicated. So let me simplify this for you. Remember how I said earlier that we're not gonna be processing our mic at all in this video? Well, that means we can just ignore all of these controls because all of these controls are for controlling how your audio sounds. So we're not even gonna touch any of these. We're also not gonna be doing any recording in voice meter. So this tape recorder thing in the corner, which by the way, it's 2020, man. We don't use tape recorders anymore. So just get that out of here. Also just a little pre-setup, go into the menu and make sure auto restart audio engine is checked and run in system menu at startup. This will just make sure that voice meter starts every time you restart Windows. So now we're just left with a bunch of columns, which are our inputs and our outputs. The five columns on the left are the three hardware inputs and the two virtual inputs from the diagram I showed you earlier. And the five on the right are the three hardware outputs and two virtual outputs. We're gonna set up our hardware output first so we can actually hear something. So just click on A1 and then a dropdown will appear and just select whatever your headphones or your speakers are. You're gonna see each audio device listed multiple times, but with the prefix double WDM or KS or MME. They're basically all the same audio devices. They just use different drivers. We're gonna choose the WDM version of our speakers. If you wanna set up a second device like headphones, you can set that in the A2 column exactly the same way. Next, we need to tell Windows to pass audio into voice meter because right now, audio is still getting passed directly to your speakers or directly to your headphones. To do that, go into your control panel and then search for change system sounds and then this window should pop up. In the playback tab, you'll see a list of devices and one of the devices is gonna have a green check mark in it, which is probably gonna be your speakers or your headphones. This is the device that Windows is routing all of your audio into and we don't want that. We want our audio to be routed through voice meter. If you scroll to the bottom of that list, you're gonna see two devices that say voice meter input and voice meter aux input. The naming is really confusing this, but basically voice meter input corresponds to that first virtual input in voice meter and aux input corresponds to the second virtual input in voice meter. We're gonna choose voice meter input and select set default. And if you've done it right, you can start playing any audio. It could be a YouTube video, it could be music, your favorite hentai, I don't care, whatever you want. You should see the meter for the first virtual input moving up and down. And you should also hear the audio coming out of whatever device you set as your A1 hardware output. Now, if you have two hardware devices set up like I have, the first being your speakers, the second being your headphones, you'll notice that the audio is only coming out of your speakers and not your headphones. And the reason for that is because if you look at the first virtual input, you'll see these buttons that say A1, A2, A3, B1, B2. You'll see that we've only selected A1. So these buttons tell you where to route the audio. Okay, so far, this setup, not very useful. All of our audio is still being sent to this one virtual input. So all of our audio, Discord, music, it's still going through this one channel. So now we're gonna start to separate our audio out. We'll start easy. We're gonna pull out Discord's audio from the rest of our audio because right now Discord is still pointing at the same virtual input device that all of our audio is pointing to. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna go into our Discord settings, go into voice and video, and then change our output device to voice meter aux input. Remember that the aux input corresponds to the second virtual input in voice meter. So now if you do a mic check in Discord and start talking to your mic, you should see the second meter in voice meter move up and down. Then you can use the A and the B buttons to choose which audio devices you want your Discord audio to come out of. So in my case, I want my Discord audio to come out of both my speakers and my headphones. So I'm gonna choose A1 and A2. So now your Discord audio is completely decoupled from the rest of your audio, but you're still gonna hear your teammates, you know, like calling you names because you're a terrible teammate in Apex. And then you're gonna be like crying because they're all bullying you and stuff but nobody in your stream is gonna be able to hear that because they can't hear the Discord audio. Now that may be how you want it set up, not, not the crying part, but you might want it set up so that you can hear your Discord and your stream can't, but chances are you probably do want your stream to hear the Discord audio. So how do we do that? You're gonna go into OBS, go into your sources, right click and add an audio capture device. And you're gonna set the device to your voice meter aux input. 
So this is basically gonna capture all the audio that's being fed into that second virtual input device. Then just make sure that you've added this audio output capture source into every single scene that you want your Discord audio to be heard. So this is a good setup. So every time you just wanna mute your Discord audio so that your stream can't hear it, you just mute that audio source in OBS and that'll just mute just your Discord, but leave the rest of your audio completely untouched. But let's say we wanted to add another layer of complexity to this and we wanted to add music to our stream. And let's say our music is coming in through YouTube in a Chrome browser and we want all that audio to come in yet another audio source in OBS. This is a bit complicated because you'll notice in voice meter, we don't have any more virtual inputs anymore. So what are we gonna do? We're, we're just gonna pull a virtual input out of thin air? Uh, yeah, kind of. Uh, remember how we installed VB cable? Basically what VB cable does is it allows us to turn one of our hardware inputs into another virtual input. Remember that these hardware inputs can only be used for things like a physical microphone, but by installing VB cable, we can plug another program like YouTube into one of the hardware inputs. To do that, we're gonna select input on our hardware input one, and then we're gonna scroll down to where it says cable output. Then we just have to tell YouTube to point all of its audio to that VB cable output because right now all of YouTube's audio is still going through the default Windows audio device, which is that virtual input device that we set earlier. How do we tell YouTube where to output its audio? If you go into your PC settings, go into sound settings and at the bottom it should say app volume and device preferences. You can see a list of all the programs playing audio on your PC, and you can change the output device for each program. So if you're playing your music off Spotify or Chrome or whatever people play music off nowadays, you just need to change the output for that program to cable input. If you've done it correctly, the first hardware input in voice meter should now be moving up and down when you're playing music or any audio from that program. Again, you can use the A and the B buttons again to decide which devices that audio comes out of. So again, I'm gonna set A1 and A2 on because I wanna hear the music in my headphones and in my speakers. Then in OBS, we can do exactly like we did for Discord. We just add another audio output capture device, select cable input as our device, and then now we have a third channel that we can route audio to. By now, you should have three audio devices in OBS plus your microphone, which you can all independently control without affecting each other, which will allow you to mute your Discord in your stream but still hear it in your headphones, or even allow you to mute your music in your headphones and still come out in your stream. You just have complete control of your audio now. But let's just say you wanted to go even crazier and add even more programs as separate channels at OBS because you know, you're, you're greedy and three just isn't enough for you. You can download up to two more of those VB cables. They're called VB cable A and VB cable B. By the way, all of the naming for all of these different channels really sucks for voice meter. It's really confusing. Anyway, VB cable A and B are pretty much exactly the same thing as VB cable. It's just you get two more of them, but you do have to pay for them. But they do function exactly the same as VB cable. So if you wanna turn your other two hardware inputs into virtual inputs, well then you can pay to download VB cable A and B. But that's gonna do it for this voice meter tutorial. Guys, I know this video was not funny, okay? I could, I could only fit like five jokes into that video, which is like, way less than the number of jokes that I usually fit into videos. I even wore like an Elmo shirt today so I can like make you guys laugh and I didn't even, you didn't even see it for the whole video. But if you'd like to laugh at my crappy jokes, come watch me on twitch.tv slash nutty. I actually changed my name this week. So we're Nutella forever, he's dead now. We're twitch.tv slash nutty. Also, if you want more help for setting up your stream or setting up voice meter because you couldn't figure it out through my crappy video, Make sure to join the Discord, link in the description box down below. Other than that, this video is done. Class dismissed. We'll see you next time.